Welcome to the Studio African Utility Week. I'm Rose Van Lock and I'm joined now by Wilfred Chereni, okay. um, Senior Manager at the Zimbabwe Electricity Transmission and Distribution Company. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Rose. Now, the ZETDC has been in the news lately for putting out a tender for smart meters, which was then withdrawn. Could you give us a little bit of the background about that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, the tender for smart metering. Actually, on our metering strategy, uh, we implemented the prepaid metering, and the next phase is the smart metering technology. So the initial approach was to go 300,000, and the 300,000 was going to be deployed ad hoc at all customers. But after re-looking at our business requirements, we realized that the 300,000 were a bit of an overkill. We're not going to derive much value. So we reviewed the figure to 60,000. The 60,000 is based on a targeted and tailored approach where only the medium and large power users are going to have smart meters. In other words, the lower end of the customers, they are already catered for under the prepaid metering technology, which is doing very well in terms of revenue collection, timber detection, everything. So there's no need to replace that technology for now. So the revised the scope is 60,000, which is targeting the medium to large power users. Medium, that is basically your small to medium enterprises. Okay. So the main objective is to convert all customers to prepaid, including the big customers. Because we also have got a problem at that level of non-payment. So the expectation is that if you convert customers to prepaid, it will improve our revenue collection. Correct. So was it a case of political interference in, in putting out an original tender for 300 meters that wasn't actually needed? Mm. Yeah, it might. I wouldn't take it that way. Of course, the perception is that it's political interference, but uh, truly speaking, it wasn't political interference. I think it was the initial approach, there was a uh, a maybe any underestimation on the need for smart metering where the perception was that the prepaid meters that we've installed customers are tempering with them and there is rampant theft but what we've done is that we've put the initiatives in place like mounting them on the pole and also the meters that we've put the prepaid they are not very dormant i mean they also have got the, they've got dormant they are not dumb i mean They've got dormant smart metering uh, technology, I mean functionality, which you can activate by putting uh, additional components like data concentrators. So we can still achieve uh, the required revenue protection uh, features by activating those. Uh, so there's no need to replace them for now. So I'm just dispelling the notion that it was a political interference. It wasn't. It was more like, I think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a perception that uh, the current prepaid meters are not doing well, let's replace them by smart metering. But after okay. reviewing, we realized that uh, we don't need to have smart meters all of. We just need a few of our customers on smart metering for now. Right. So is the ambition with um, in using smart meters for commercial industrial users to but, reduce potential uh, non-technical losses? Yeah, say. basically it's, on the, it's an initiative to reduce the non-technical losses and also we are slowly moving towards smart grid. So it's a milestone towards the implementation of smart grid. And another driver is that of managing renewable energy. So if you put smart meters, the assumption is that you'll be able to measure uh, excess energy that is fed into the grid by customers with renewable energy, especially solar. Does the utility have a smart grid blueprint, a vision of what they you want to work towards? Yeah, we do have a sequencing roadmap starting now until 2018. By 2018, we should, should have a fully fledged smart grid. So what we have done is, we, because of resource constraints, we are starting off with the, those the, the areas, those functions, which will add value now. Specifically, mm. we are looking at what is custom, called customer centricity where we are looking at the functions that will enhance customer service delivery and also revenue assurance. So revenue assurance, I'm talking of upfront collection of revenue. Mm. Because the idea is to have 100% prepaid 
customer base. Yeah. At the moment, we only have got about 60% of our customers, where we derive 40% of our revenue on prepaid. So the other category, which give us 60% of our revenue, they are on postpaid, and that is high risk. So the idea okay. is to resolve that by putting them on prepaid as well. So we've got a, a sequencing roadmap from now until 2018. Okay. Correct. And then beyond that, the sort of bigger picture of the smart grid. Yeah, beyond that, we'll be just enhancing on the generation, on the transmission. But we should have at least covered about 80-90% of our requirements in terms of smart grid by 2018. So okay. this is in line with the, there's a blueprint, economic blueprint in Zimbabwe called the Zim Asset. Maybe you've heard about the Zim Asset. So in Zim Asset, we've got a target to have implemented 800,000 customers to have migrated to prepaid and smart metering by 2018. Okay. So, so the idea is to improve the efficiency and effectiveness in terms of service delivery. So this is in line with the aspirations highlighted in the Zim Asset blueprint. And do you have a sort of standard in mind for uh, meter technology, uh, communication technology? Yeah. Uh, in terms of metering technology, we've gone for the STS prepayment, okay. which is doing very well. So in terms of uh, improvement of efficiency, revenue collection, I mean, uh, it's doing very well. And then uh, also the other technology that we are going to implement is smart metering technology. So. All those are actually documented in our metering strategy, okay. which I have said covers up to 2018. So I know you're here with a delegation from Zimbabwe looking for the right technology to, to um, deploy. You mentioned renewable energy. Um, are you looking at meters that will be able to kind of assess the, the load coming from um, perhaps commercial industrial users? For correct, we are here. There's quite a big delegation from Zimbabwe, including up to minister level, our CEO, our managing directors, our directors. So in Zimbabwe, we value training so much because that's why in the region, if you look at Zimbabwe, in terms of human capital, I think we are leading the pack. So we, our government, they value training side that I think a lot of our expenditure is on training. So that's why I think we have sent quite a number of our team here is to learn and also keep abreast with the technological trends. So you're talking, in a way, you're talking about smart energy by using uh, renewables to come into the grid. I mean, is that part of the blueprint yeah, put together? Yeah, correct. There is. Actually, there's a project that is being implemented now where we are talking of about 135 megawatts. It's being implemented in a place called Gwanda in Zimbabwe. So it's a project that is already, I think the, the implementation is already started. The planning, they are, before the end of the year, they should have started the implementation. That's about 135 megawatts, which will be fed into the grid. So to complement that, we also need to implement the other part of the smart metering. So we are actually moving both the sides, the renewable energy, the smart metering, and the energy efficiency side. So you see smart meters as a, as a sensor that will allow you to, to manage the loads yeah. from renewables? Actually, smart meters, they talk of consumer. Mm. You know, consumers, before we used to have consumers who are just consuming, but with smart meters, the consumers can also produce, hence the name consumer. Mm. So in Zimbabwe, we are promoting the use of renewable energy so much that even our regulator, they've come up with a net metering a police okay. where customers who have got excess energy will feed it back into the grid and they will be compensated for that. So we're talking of consumers instead of just consumers. So who are your kind of target prosumers? Are they the large you know, manufacturers or, or could it be a, a residential? Yeah, we are looking uh, at anyone. Anyone. You know, a, a domestic customers can convert their rooftops and use the solar, I mean, the solar panels. So they can generate excess energy. So we're looking at end level. That's why we've got the smart metering right up to single phase or current, right up to the domestic level. Of course, the bigger the customers, the better, but we are not choosing. And would you look at creating some kind of smart grid test bed 
so that you can see how all these different parts are kind of linking together. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like I said, we are not going to we are going to, to test the technology and see how feasible it is before we actually embrace the technology fully. So yeah, we are going to have a test case. Like in Zimbabwe, they are already in, in, a, in a town called Mtare. They, there's a pilot project being carried out where they are testing this solar technology. Okay. So we need to complement that with the deploying the right technology, which is smart metering. So do you feel you're quite sort of far, you know, leading the pack? I think you mentioned that in terms of smart grid. Yeah, in terms of smart grid, actually we are, we are leading the pack because in Zimbabwe we are not just rushing. We are taking a calculated approach. So we've got people with the experience like myself. I used to work for Botswana Power Corporation. We, we implemented the first smart metering project in Africa. I was, that was in 2006. So I know the risks and the mm -hmm. dangers of just going so that's why we are taking a calculated risk. So I think in terms of the skills, the competence and experience, we're okay. Mm. Do you, I mean, obviously there is a lot of activity worldwide with smart grid and associations and alliances. Do you tap into any of those or do you feel in Africa at the moment there's not it, enough kind of yeah. representation? Actually, we are also, because you can't, you, can't, you, know, you can't be isolated. This is a global village where you need to learn from other, like in Zimbabwe. Uh, me specifically, I am on the IEC group. There's a way group which is working on development of smart city. Mm. It's, the, I think, Jobek City okay. and the other South African utilities. So I am a member of that IEC way group where we are working on developing smart metering standards for Africa. Mm. So I think we are learning a lot from that group and we are implementing whatever we've learned back home. And lastly, Wilfred, I know you're here, as I said, looking at technology. Is there anything kind of caught your eye that you think is applicable to your situation in Zimbabwe from the exhibition? Yeah, uh, from the exhibition, we are learning quite a lot. I think there's a lot of developments from last year in terms of uh, the smart metering uh, technology. It's fast uh, developing. So we are taking all those into account so that uh, before we float our tender, of course, what we would not do is to align our specification to a particular supplier mm. but we just look at what is in the market and then so that we get the best mm. so i think coming to this forum actually has assisted us a lot in the i think we are going to take a number of good ideas back home which will assist us improve mm. our specifications and ideas and we should look out for the tender coming out is it in the next month or yeah Actually, it has to come out because we are targeting to have installed. We are going to start off with a pilot for 10,000 mm. before we roll out 60,000. So the target is to have implemented the pilot, installed the pilot by end of December 2015. So okay. we've got a tight uh, timeline to implement this tender. So I think before the end of this month, they floated the tender for the 10,000 pilot phase. Great. Well, I wish you good luck and thank you for joining thank, us. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We're at the African Utility Week studio. Thank you.